Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Well, hello and welcome to the Plymouth Raiders podcast, the first of many, with myself, Pablo Cheeks, and Mr. Paul Nicholson. Really excited for my first ever podcast. Very, very, very keen to doing this, but a little bit nervous today. Well, you're right to be nervous, because we said we weren't going to do an awful lot of basketball-specific kind of chat stats and reviews and things like that, but we've decided that because this is going to go out early each week, we'll have the weekend's action in the bank and be able to talk very briefly about it. When I say very briefly, you've got one minute to talk through the Raiders' performances this weekend, Friday and Sunday. You ready? When the buzzer goes, it's game over. All right, let's do this. Okay, when you're ready. Okay, so first game against Worcester, come away victorious in a very, very low scoring game. Um, what I would say about this when I can keep it quick, because don't underestimate the power of defense. Plymouth Raiders played a fantastic defensive game. And they, by doing that, sometimes you have off scoring games mm. and you can counteract that by playing great defense. So that's that one. Newcastle Eagles, oh my days, the fan in me was buzzing. The coach in me <laughs> was buzzing. But what a game from two very talented, very physical teams. Big shout, Chris Porter Bunton. For me, I don't care about anything else. MVP because of the effort, the strength, the, the heart that he showed whilst being hurt was phenomenal. There you go, one minute. Boom. It's before the buzzer as well. You got nothing to add? Not too late. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's that in the book. So let's, let's, without any further ado, start off with our very first guest on the show. Please enjoy Mr. LVC Dusha. China Fleet Country Club are proud sponsors of Plymouth Raiders and Guard LVC Dusha. We are delighted to welcome its customers back, so join this Christmas and save up to £40 per person off membership or visit to enjoy the many festive events taking place. Visit www.china-fleet.co.uk for more details. Based just over the bridge in Saltash, China Fleet has many facilities to offer. Why not test yourselves on our fantastic golf course, followed by a three-course meal in our fantastic restaurant, or if it's a relaxing day, then just use our spa facilities and swimming pool. It could just be the thing for you. We want to wish Raiders all the best of luck and can't wait to see you all. Well, here we are then with Mr. LVC Dusha. It doesn't really need an introduction, I don't think. Uh, Plymouth Raiders, second term with the club now. Um, welcome. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me on here as well. It's nice to be, nice to be back as well. A bit different from last time, but yeah, it's good to be back. It is a bit different, isn't it? Um, my man there as well, Mr. Paul Nicholson. Yeah, gr- great to have you on, buddy. Um, you know, I wish I could be a trainer with you guys in a minute, but... You know, we'll we'll stick with Zoom calls for now, but it's it's good to have you here. <laughs> you know, really interested actually in in getting to know the real LVC Dusha. You know, and that's oh, what, yeah. that's what we're here for. This is the first Prima Freitas podcast. And we don't wanna we don't wanna touch on how's training. What's it like playing under COVID? It doesn't interest me right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we wanna know you from the start. What are you about? Who are you? Where are you from? So I've done a bit of searching. You're a hard man to, <laughs> to get information on. I'll tell you that now. Yeah, that's good. I like that. I think that's how it should be, I think. Yeah. You're on Wikipedia, though. <laughs> I know, I just, you know what's funny enough? I just had a look on the laptop. I, this is going to sound so big-headed as well, but I just had a look on the laptop. <laughs> and, um, you know, I don't know, just me goofing around. I typed uh, my name down on... Uh, google i got a wikipedia page i read it it says i was born in london my day of birth is completely wrong is it so i don't yeah, oh. I don't know how i, I don't know how accurate these these stuff are on wikipedia but yeah that's a crazy start that's a good I had yeah. 15th of july 1994 yeah now nah, 15th of july is correct but if you carry on reading there's another one that says 2nd of may 92 um <laughs> that's definitely not that's definitely not my birthday it said i was born in london and raised in london and yeah i mean i love london but I definitely wasn't born there 
Oh. So, so you weren't born in London. So just tell everyone where you were born and how long you were, were there for. Uh, I was born in, uh, in Tropoe, Albania. Tropoe is the city where I was born. And um, yeah, I was born and raised there for the first couple of years of my life. My family was, all of my family is from there as well. Everyone in my family was born there. None of us are, you know, was born out here. Yeah. Um, moved, I lived out there. It was pretty, uh, it was a very different lifestyle than, you know, the youngers would have around um, around here now. It's completely, completely different. I, I live, obviously, where I stay is all mountains and, Really, you know, sheep's and yeah, like it's all. It's very different. It's you know, it's uh, it, the upbringing back then was much different. I remember uh, as much as I could at that age. Of course, we came over to the UK when I was six, I believe, or five, wow. five or six. I came over here. Well, before we came here, we went to um, we went to uh, stayed a year in Belgium, where okay. my brother's sister lives. Yeah, so we stayed a year in Belgium done a year out there, done school out there. Apparently, I was okay. I learned to speak French, but I, I don't remember I was going to say, how many, how many languages can you speak? Um, English, Albanian, American, Australian. <laughs> just, English and, just, English and, just English and Albanian. But you just got English by. You Albanian. got by in Belgium. That's, that's, that's not bad. That's quite impressive. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was good. It's, it's good, you know. It's, it's all right. Definitely, um, it was a different lifestyle than it was back home. Yeah. I mean, we obviously be- left... Sorry, I was going to say, tell me why, why did you and the family move? Uh, well, back then, it was uh, obviously the war was going on. Yeah. We had the big, big uh, civil war going on at the time. Like, it was huge back then. And obviously, being from Tropoi, uh, which I'm not sure, you know, I always get the joke of, oh, you're the guy from Taken because it's filmed in Tropoi. So it's always, it's always like, um, oh, it was the kind of city that was hot at the time for the war as well. And my dad's got a. Uh, like my grandparents who on my dad's side have passed away but they they had a massive family and we lived out there as well at the time so it was very like um it, it was very it was dangerous a lot of the time really? like yeah a lot a lot of the time M- majority of my family uh my grandma had i think she had 14 children i believe and i think six of them passed away when i was young wow. all due to like yeah so just it was very like um it, it was different. Even now, when I go back and my like my uncles and and so on, when I go to theirs, they tell me certain stories from you know before I was born or when I was just born, and it's just interesting to hear how it was. But the lifestyle was completely different. Obviously, my dad wanted a better life for us and making money in 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 Al- Albania is very difficult, you know, uh, back then in that time. Yeah. So yeah, it was just it was, it was very different. We came over. We my dad just wanted a better life for us all to be fair and he was the first of his family to actually move here so it was kind of a big weight on his shoulders to yeah come over here make a living and help support everyone back home as well could you have could you lead like a normal kind was it like a war zone i mean that describing that it 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 sounds i mean terrifying it was yeah no it was it was hectic like my dad tells me how um for our own protection we used to like my dad's family and it wasn't so much it was back and forth Mm just like our family directly it was like you know at the time my dad and he's got seven brothers yeah six brothers one of them wow. passed away not too long ago but um all of his brothers kind of back in albania days you don't really have much of a choice like you know if you're a young male yeah. or a young adult you kind of get dragged into that you know battlefield sort of thing so it's like a it was you know some of the stuff he told me is a bit like oh wow like god i've been spoiled compared to how you guys brought up sort of way but um yeah, it was it was just tough. Like a lot of, the t- I remember my first ever visit, which I'll probably expand more on later. But my first ever visit to uh, Albania, when I, um, I'm not, I forgot how old I was. I think it was, uh, I think when I was in year eight. I'm not okay. sure how old that would make mm-hmm. me. So my first ever visit to the UK to Albania, sorry, was like I, I don't think I'd ever forget it. Like I'm, you're allowed to have children sitting on passenger seats, laugh and. It's just like AK-47 <laughs> laying down on the dashboard. Wow. And it's, it's so normal to just have a gun on top of your TV. And all of this to me was a bit like, I'm looking at my older brother and I'm kind of like, oh, mate, like, shit, like, are you sure we're safe here? Like, do we trust these? Like, I have, obviously, I know they're family, but I haven't seen them in years. Are you sure they're, they're with us for sure? Like, it was, it was, it's different, but I feel I like that's what's made that, me yeah. different. I yeah. feel like that's what's, that's what's made me much different to 
a lot of other people, to be fair. But yeah, I would. I mean, I wouldn't change it at all. It is what it is, you know. Uh, you went to obviously Europe, went to Belgium, and then from Belgium moved to London. Uh, yeah, we. Uh, yeah, I mean, I. Not many people know, obviously, the story of some of the stuff. I've missed out a lot, to be honest with you, about stuff that's happened back home and yeah. uh, some of the stuff that's happened over the years. Uh, only a, a handful of people, especially mainly close friends, guys I went to school with, like my, you know, my best mates, whatever, would know. But uh, yeah, like we, we, and I don't know. I'd, I've never been comfortable talking about it. I think you guys are the first ever people. I thought, like, I thought, I don't know. Even before this, I was kind of a bit like, oh, I don't know what I should say and shouldn't say, just because I don't really, not really bothered what people think. I just know how judgmental people are if you get yeah, that. not yeah. i mean i'm not phased by it it is what it is i've got my own life they've got their own life but it's just i don't like the whole oh you know you're an immigrant or you was an immigrant and you done this and you done that so it's a bit like i don't know i mean we did immigrate over to the uk stayed in belgium we tried before uh we was unsuccessful and then gave it some time a couple uh, a year or so tried again got all the way to belgium and we was kind of very happy we made it that far. Mm. It took us weeks, months of traveling and wow. sleeping outside. And like, it's just, just normal stuff, you know what it is? It's not, uh, it's normal now that I think about it, or it's not normal, but mm. I just That's try to make it act as normal as For you. Yeah, I just try to assume it's normal just because I don't want, I don't like the judgments that come with it, if you know what I mean. I don't like the, oh, you, you, you know, you're immigrant or go to your country and you coming to like just so much silly shit I, I mean I don't experience it much no. I know that sounds quite hectic I don't really experience that but I don't really tell anyone neither so I don't have to yeah. hear the you know hear that kind of side to it but yeah it was difficult we went over to Belgium and then we um, my mum's brother that year that we was in Belgium they in fact made it to um, England as well to London so there was a family of six wow. my, all my cousins with their mum and dad and we thought you know what time might be right we we was a little bit older a little bit wiser so we made way to the uk as well legally of course and at the time and then um yeah like we just lived in the house of uh my cousins for a couple of years just to kind of mm. settle down and figure out life and figure out what we were going to do and it was yeah it was it was really difficult like that part of life i, I definitely remember it a lot especially because at the time we've only got you only got my two brothers and my mum and dad and my cousins who, who we all lived in one house at that time. So it was very like, it's 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 very complicated, very difficult as well. But it's, it's, it's yeah, you know, it's, it's life. It's man. It's I mean, in terms of, you say you made it to Belgium and then from there you went on. Is this this is all? In terms of, like, of travel, you're doing this in what? In cars, and then you're you're just in, in, transport. In, or? in whatever and just anything anything. I, I i i yeah i mean as a story i remember now I'll, I'll always remember i don't think i'll ever forget but i i i don't know how to even word it without sounding so like silly but yeah it was like we i do remember sleeping outside and mm. i know the whole like cliche of like oh back of the lorries and boats and this and that and this and that but believe it or not that's really how it, it was back then do you know what I'm saying you mm. if you was even fortunate uh, fortunate enough to find space on a on, on a lorry to be honest with you mm. or, or even on a boat or whatever so it was it was uh yeah it was definitely different but that's yeah that's how we made it work and survival what we did yeah. to be honest yeah well I, I remember um, there was one night obviously I was the youngest in my family I still am so we um I remember one night we were uh, waiting for one of the lorries to leave and Obviously, I, I don't know how it works, but I think at the time the lorry driver must have known that you know there was a couple guys, not just us, but a couple families boarding, and we were just sleeping. We slept under a tree for quite a few of us as well, like different families. We was under there for a few days, just mm. not moving, just waiting for that lorry to just get ready to depart. But it's yeah, it is what it is, man. You just get different life experiences to make you different. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That's. Uh, yeah. That's a serious story, you know. That's uh, that must be must mean like difficult and terrifying, but at the same time, you didn't know any different. I, I didn't. I thought it was normal. Like at the time, I'm thinking, oh, well, you know, I, I, I'm obviously I make a joke about everything. But at the time, I'm thinking, oh, okay, well, this is how you got to other countries. This is how you fly. Like, I guess this is what it's like to 
<laughs> you know, travel abroad. But it really wasn't. I mean, the older I get, the more I realize how risk taking it was and how, like, oh wow, like you, my parents, and that's why my parents will always be like my every. That's why I got so much time for family, and I'm so big on I was family. Say, like, it's it's mm. clear to see if anyone who follows you on social media or anything like that, they see how big of a family man you are, and I didn't realize how much of a family man you were until I really sort of paid attention a bit more. Um, mm. You're always traveling to see either friends and family in London or you're going back home. And that's yeah, a- yeah. Family's everything, though. You've got to understand, like, if we ain't, like, I know friends is good and it's great to pass time and, you know, mm. friends become family and stuff, but there, there's honestly nothing like immediate family that's why i'm i've never understood how people are like oh like i hate my dad or i can't speak to my mom like you, you shut your mouth like you better appreciate your mom and dad you better like you never know what can happen like especially for me my mom and dad done everything for me even not even just coming to the country even when we was here like just the way we had to live and watching your mom and dad sort of like even your mum, now you think of it, like, you know, the older you get, the more you realise, you know, women, you got to cherish women. Like, women do everything for us all. Like, just be realistic. Like, just remembering some of the stuff my mum used to do and, like, how, like, just, how can you not? Like, you're a coward to sit there and, you know, disrespect your family or say mm. something discriminating about your mum and dad or, oh, I don't like them because, you know, they are, oh, they take my phone or they've done this. or they Like, come on, they're doing it for your best interest. And my mum and dad have honestly done everything for me. Mm. Like I, I, I'm far from spoiled, but I'm the first person to say they've done everything for me. Like I'm, I'm spoiled. Like they've spoiled me, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not a spoiled person at all. But they've definitely spoiled me in the moving us to a better country, giving me opportunities, allowing me to do anything I want. Like it's just, you know, I'm, I'll be ever so grateful. So the least I could do is see him as much as I can. You know. Mm. So how old were you when when you got to the UK? Um, sorry, um, we got here in nine in 2000 so i think i was no i was about five i think it was around the 2000 2001 mm-hmm. yeah sorry i was about yeah about five years old was completely new to the country mm. i was like I'd, I'd never seen anything like it. especially going to a sea like london as well yeah. it's that's a contrast like, it's, isn't it? yeah. yeah it's so much do you know what i mean and it's so busy and it's so active london, and it's so like was london the yeah. goal or was it just a case of it, to be honest it was just the case of getting here like mm. anything away from it, it was either it, it would have had to be in England because at the time like in Albania it sounds silly but back in back home it's like the the pounds worth so much so mm-hmm. if we're going to leave to go to a country let's go somewhere where the currency is worth working and mm. putting our head down and making a living and not getting into any trouble and at the time I think also the UK was easier to cut like to access as well mm-hmm. it, from I'm, I'm not sure but I'm just from what I think, but but yeah, it was it was just it was it was easier. UK was the goal, not so much London, but I think that's that was you know coming to London was a, a big thing, especially for for myself. It's a big city. You need to you know so you kind of have to hold your own. Going to school in London, obviously learning to speak English. I learned to speak English through just sitting in the back of a class and just picking yeah. up people wow. different. So it was it was very difficult. So it was it was it, but it was good. Like it's. It's why I speak how I speak now. Like, you know, obviously people always judge me. Like, oh, why do you talk like, you know, mm. you're, you're from Albania. Why do you talk like you're from born and raised London? But I only, I grew up in London. Like, I learned <laughs> to speak English in London. Like, I only know how to speak how they would in London. I'm sure if I came to Plymouth, I'd have a Plymouth accent. You sound like a speak, like, Plymouth. Yeah. yeah, do you get what I mean? Like, it's just, it is where it is. It's like, where you I mean, were. People don't always understand. So it's just, you kind of just play the cards you're dealt. Whereabouts in, whereabouts in London was it? Uh, well, when we first moved, I don't remember the area, but the older I've gotten, I, I right now, for example, I know London very well. Like I know London off the back of my hand, to be completely honest with you. So uh, when we first moved in, it was it was by East London. I remember always being by uh, by um, uh, what's the name of the station? By the big Brit. I'm not East Ham. It was somewhere in East London for sure. I remember because I went there a couple of years ago. Well, when I was in school with my mum, hmm. and she was like, "Oh, well, this is where we lived with your cousins and." Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And I was just like, oh wow, I thought I've always been West London my whole life, but I guess not. It's a bit of East as well. But yeah, but we was there for a few years and then moved to West London. And then within ten years, we was just in houses and houses. Like it was, it was, yeah, it was hectic. We were just moving in between council flats and estates and just mm. wherever we had a roof. To be honest with you, so it was a lot of. Just and this is all around. over London. 
Yeah, but majority of it was in West London because the councils tend to keep you in that same okay, borough, in the borough yeah. out there. But yes, but it just it kind of moves you about. So we'd always been like in a UB2 or TW5, which are different mm-hmm. West London postcodes and, or W12. But it would just move you around wherever it can, really. But it was, it, was, it, was, it was good. It just felt like London felt like home and it still does. That's why I'm so like, you know, I'm, where am I from? I'm, I'm from Albania, but, you know, London will probably always be a home for me just because of yeah. I, I was raised in London. I grew up in London. Everything about London is just myself, you know. So, so fast forward in a few years, um, you've obviously gone to school in London and at some point someone's put this orange ball in front of you and you <laughs> said, I quite like this. This, this seems yeah. fun. <laughs> What was the last bit? Sorry, it yes, echoed out. When, when did that really start? The basketball. Um, to be to be honest with you, in school, like I was, uh, well, firstly, we all had to behave in school, and my parents worked from the earliest till late, late night every day, seven days a week. They still do till this day, to be honest with you. And um, we'd stay in after school clubs, so you know the after school at like the mm-hmm. extra extra curriculum subjects with. So me and both my older brothers played every sport we could i promise you i'm back in school i've got a, a cricket um <laughs> trophy i've got a cricket trophy we've won badminton tournaments volleyball tournaments nice. like there's every sport like i'm so into all my sports that's why i'm so like active right now and um basketball is one of them sports as well my older brother in fact both my brothers played but my older brother more so played um basketball as well and uh he was really good footballer he was a semi-pro footballer by the age of 16 so I was like, in my head, it's like, oh, well, I'm not going to be as good as him. So let me, like, let me pick a different sport, whatever. And then I'd started meeting guys. I'd started meeting pros at the local gym I was going to. And they were telling me all about like, their experiences. They're telling me, oh, I'm traveling in the world and I'm playing sports and I'm, I'm being paid for it. And you, you just hear people's story and you're thinking, wow, like you're telling me you go around playing this sport and get paid. Something that's outside of football. I only ever knew football back then. Mm-hmm. So it was like, oh, wow, like, that's actually an, an option. Yeah. It just started working. Basketball become really fun as well. It was stopped getting wet as well during the winter. You know, when you're playing <laughs> indoors and everyone's football, I don't have to go watch my brother warmer. anymore and wait for him to finish to walk home. So it was, it was good, but it was just, it was fun. Basketball for me has always been like a, just always been exciting. Like the fact that you can play one on ones, two on twos, three on threes, four on fours. Like it's, it's just, it's, you know, it's endless, you know, it was, and it was fun. It was, I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed the, the the work that came with it like I enjoyed it's easy to say work hard and you'll get good but basketball is a perfect example of that Mm. like you you bust your you know you work your ass off doing certain skill in basketball I promise you you're going to get good at that skill like it's just sports it's just rewarding Mm. whereas in football it's like you can try millions of times to hit a crossbar I'm going to have one good day where I'm just going to hit the crossbar endlessly you know it's not it's not so much like basketball has its rewards for all the work you put in for me it was just it was fun. Like I just mm. enjoyed it. Working hard kept me, to be honest with you, kept me out of school during the hours you wanted to be out of school. Like in London, after school was probably the worst time to ever be out, just because there's like nine schools in one borough. So it's yeah, like, all yeah. oh, right, well, you know, good luck getting home. It's like, a, you know, you find your own way home. If you make it home, you make it home. If you don't, try again, a bit different route next time. So it was just fun. It kept me busy. Kept my brother's busy. Kept me doing something instead of going home and just waiting for. My you know, parents to get back, and it, it was it was just fun. I ended up. My brother, in fact, introduced me to um, Jack Majeski, who was my coach for a very long time. That, that was a, L- yeah. London United. Yeah. Mm, yeah, he introduced me to him, and l- at that point, London United were a really successful team. They'd won nearly every cup, and I remember guys like Jack Stannard and even Kalen, who plays for Surrey Scorchers right now. Even Kalen was like a. Um, one of the young young guys on the team as well, and I used to go watch him play, and I just used to love the pace of it. I'm thinking, oh, I can do all of that. Like, let me, you know, give me a chance. And then, in <laughs> fact, Jack became my older brother's form tutor in college. So Jack was um, Bessard, who's my older brother, his uh, form tutor back in college, and was like, you know, oh, Jack, my brother really loves basketball. Um, can I bring him to a game? So he brings him down, whatever, and then eventually managed to get me to practice. And then, yeah, me and Jack just got along, started loving it, started getting more opportunities, playing basketball, was able to, you know, go to an academy and start meeting guys. And I made friends who are, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an uncle to one of my close, fr- uh, close friends who just had a baby and we met through basketball. So it's like, mm. you know, I'm, 
I've made some serious friends from it as well. And it was just fun. Like it just opened so much doors. The second I took basketball serious, it just it was endless for me. Like it's the best thing I think I've ever done. Because you joined Harefield Academy, which is the London United link, right? That yeah, was... London United Harefield Academy. That's that's when I joined. The eleven studied a B Tech in sport. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. It was. I found that quite difficult as well, to be honest. <laughs> you know that that's interesting though because I'm relatable to that with the academy guys we have here. We have a lot of guys they, who do B techs, and yeah. they they worry that oh, if I'm doing a B tech, I'm not doing A level, so I'm not going to be able to progress in, to university or whatever. And I'm trying to explain. I to thought them. I used to think that as well. I honestly yeah. used to think I used to think B tech. I'm like B techs, you know, it's for guys who don't study well, like myself, or guys who, well, if I'm doing a B tech, how am I going to get enough, you know, scores to try and get out to America or how am I going to, you know, get into a university I want to get into? But the older, the more I started studying, the more I found out BTEC is, in fact, you can still get the same amount of A-levels. It just requires a bit more work and less exams. Mm, and I was course, like, that's perfect yeah. for me. Yeah, just a loads of the coursework. And for me, I was like, that's perfect. If I ain't got to do an exam, which I'm really not good at doing an exam, you know, I, I don't have the attention span to just sit there and concentrate for two hours and go crazy. For, two, I, for me, it's not that. So BTEC was so suitable for me. I, I think I would choose BTEC even if I was smart enough to do A-levels. I don't think it's got anything to do with being smart enough. I think it's just wanting to do it. But I think I'd still choose BTEC. And it just worked out perfect for me. BTEC was like the coursework. It gives you enough time. You get yourself a couple of weeks to do some work. Mm. I'll take that any day over two hours of an exam. I was the same. I was terrible. We did. I'm a bit. Yeah. I'm quite old. <laughs> BTECs were. Uh, we had. Uh, we had NVQs. Been going on for that long, have they? We had GMVQs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing with you. Uh, you're right, though. <laughs> <laughs> we had MVQs and GMVQs <clears throat> oh, which oh, yeah. were like worth you did one course it was worth like five GCSEs and there were no exams oh, yeah? it's, oh it's perfect I should have I should have studied back then if that was possible. I should have told my parents to, <laughs> should have told my parents to leave sooner it was a lot more blagging back then if I'm honest <laughs> <laughs> I would have been perfect probably so, so you were you were at the academy for a few years um, you, you obviously made a a good impression you know I'm sure there was plenty of stuff in between but 19 years old when you're still like that's your final year of academy 19 years old you're turning pro yeah well I, I actually went I actually went when I was eight I think it was when I was 18 because I'm a really late born so um, I'm, a, I'm a July baby so uh, mm. when I was actually 18 I think it was when I'm 18. I'd have to ask Dan Routledge because he, he knows everything. But <laughs> I think when I was 18 was when I played my first ever game in the BBL. And um, yeah, oh, what an experience. I was talking to it the other day about the, with the Sky Guys. It was like my first ever game. We lost by like 40. And I was like, I'll never forget that again. Really? 2013? Yeah. yeah. What are we? No, 20. Yeah, so you left your... You, you um, were in Academy 2011... Been there, you would have been there for like two years or so. I think yeah, it was the uh, yeah. 13th season when it was Surrey United. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My first was with United, yeah. Um, yeah, and I had a look at the stats and tell me if I'm wrong, but to be 18 or 19 years old and average nine points a game, three rebounds, four assists Ooh. in your mm. professional season, 32 minutes a game, that's a hell of a lot of pressure on a young man. Yeah, no, it was. I, I would, I would never forget that. I think, to be honest with you, I think that's what's kind of shaped my career a bit now, and I think that's why I've been in this league for so long. Because, um, like, even me, I, I still think back to them first few years. Mm. I, don't get me wrong; it was very difficult in the sense of competing with a bunch of university guys, and you know, we had about four pros, and the rest was all my classmates essentially. So it was very like. It was difficult, but I, I enjoyed that pressure. Like I, I loved the whole challenge of a, of a, a pressure. Like I, I was even captain of the team as well, and I remember everyone talking about, oh, like you got the youngest ever captain in the BBL. And in my head, I'm thinking, why is everyone making like it's not a big deal? Surely it's not a big deal. But as the years have gone on, I'm just thinking well, how important it is to actually be able to be a captain to a, a, a professional side to, to to deliver every time. And I think the numbers. The numbers are there just because I was all I was on the floor. Like I was when I was young, I still kind of am. I'm just more aware of it now than back then. I've just always been a workhorse. I've always been like if I'm going if I'm going to play, if I'm going to you know tie my laces up and get out there, I'm not going to come in and just you know faff around and do a bit of this and yeah. do a bit of that. Like I'm going to get in there, and make the other guys' life a misery, try and make 
our team win the game and if I do it I'm, you know all good like just sorted but yeah I've never been the type to faff around and I think back then having that mindset back then with a bunch of guys who just probably saw you know a young guy which made it so much like you know help me get them points and then assist and, and so on yeah that's crazy there's veterans in the league now which aren't getting those numbers mm. <laughs> hey, that's, that's a hell of a start though. that is a hell of a start in the BBL you yeah. so, it was that I mean you, you've, you've kind of downplayed the, the fact that you're a captain and all that kind of stuff but so it, did, it just didn't phase you at all you just went <laughs> no it, it, it did don't get me like I was I loved it like I I really enjoyed that pressure. I really enjoyed that role. I really enjoyed being a captain. Like in my eyes, wherever I am, even if I'm not a captain, even on this team, you know, Ash is of course the captain, but I'm still I'm, I'm the most vocal guy on the squad. I'm the most in mm. practice. I make sure everyone, you know, everyone's either on, on time or everyone sort of knows what they're doing. If I don't, I don't care if it's Ash, who's you know a GB international, all the way down to one of the uni guys. If you know, if I see you in the wrong spot on the play. I'm going to let you know, vice versa. They're the first person to tell me, you know, be, you're in the wrong spot. Like It's just how I've always been. I've always kind of been a, a leader. I've always kind of been an, an alpha male, especially how how I was brought up. Like my dad, yeah. So like in, in my household, my dad's like a real alpha male kind of guy. And I've mm. kind of always grown up looking at him. Like my dad's really, you know, if my dad says to me, if my dad was to call me right now, say, season's done, come home, I need you to help at work. I probably wouldn't even be at practice tomorrow you know it's, I've always been like that kind of it's just that's how my life sort of been so I've kind of just got that trait from him I've always been like a leader I've always been a, a vocalist so having that captaincy role was it was nice and it's kind of made me like I am now like mm. I, I'm naturally just a talker I'm naturally just a leader I'm naturally if I've got something to say I'll say it I'm not the kind of guy to hold back because you know I've got a sensitive team or whatever I'll just find a way to say it to him that works for him you know if he doesn't like to be spoken to in front of everyone you know, bring him down to the side and just speak between me and him just so he knows I'm I'm doing it for his best interest and the team's best interest. Mm. But yeah, it, it was fun to captain that side. I mean, it was a bit uh, of like a, I'm not sure what the word is, favouritism sort of thing because Jack was of course the coach and right. I just had played three years of him when we, we we won as much as we could. We'd gone to Europe with each other. Like we've, we were very, very close. So mm. I think he gave me that role after trusting me you know, at the junior stage. So it, it was nice. You know, I'm ever so grateful for it. Even the numbers back then, it was, I, you know, I mean, to me, now they sound quite big, you know, I average back more back then than I do now. But even the minutes sense, like minutes wise, it's, it's just helped me loads experience. Like I'm, I've not been to many different places in Europe. Obviously I play for Albania and everything, but like, it's just experience wise you only gain experience in my eyes from playing so oh, having yeah. played mm. I led the league for the first two years in the BBL in minutes played over everyone over the Americans I was lit number one and in my mm. mind I'm like okay well instead of saying you know I could, I'm tired from all of that it was the complete opposite I've gained so much experience mm. I'm playing week in week out with all of these guys all of these division one players coming in and all of these vets and when Charles Smith was in the league mm. that's when I was I was like mate I'm doing this with you know with at the time, it's good, but I'm, I've never been the type to, you know, blow my own trumpet or whatever. I've always been like, a, there's more criticism than positives at time, majority of the time, anyway. That that could have given a lot of people an ego, like, hey, this kid's come in, definitely, he's 18, years old, yeah. he's gonna have all these minutes, he's gonna be the captain. And you could be going around thinking that you're the real bee's knees, like, and mm. that could affect you negative. But you took that in your stride and. It sounds like you, you you handled it really really well. Yeah. yeah. What, no. It's, what helps that? Is there anyone who helped that, or is it, is it just a mentality from you? Um, a, a bit of both, to be honest. I mean, I've got two older brothers who always kind of humble me all the time. They always tell me they're they're very humbling. They're very much like, listen, you can be the man, but if you're not winning, what are you the man of? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> what if you can you can be the best player in the, on the court but if your team's not winning you're the best player on a losing team you know what I mean they've, they've got a, a, they, they're very humbling but at the same time it's, it's also been me as well like I moved away from home when I was uh, 17 for the academy 17, 18 living out at such a young age you kind of learn to just you can't have an input and everything you can't you can't you don't want to have an ego like in my mind even till this day like an ego is just like a 
it's, it's you know why why would you have an ego? What have you done? Unless you've won everywhere you've been, and even then, like humble yourself, sort of thing. I'm I'm very much like a I've always kind of been humble. I don't believe in egos. I don't believe in in having you know oh you know I get minutes and I'm 18 years old and I'm bees knees at the club and I'm the captain. You do I tell you like that's rubbish, mate. That's 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 all a mindset. That's just someone trying to feed their ego to make themselves feel better. That's, I don't believe in that, but Fair. we're all equal. So I won't go through every, well, I'll go through every team, but we won't, we won't talk about everyone. So since then you've played, sorry, no, I didn't, uh, sorry, Scorchers until 2016. Yeah. Uh, yeah Red and Rockets. Uh, yeah, that, that was when I got back from, I from, played at Reading once I got back from um How do you Germany. pronounce Is it Pritisha? Of, was it from Pristina or from Germany? No, no, from Pristina, you're right. Pristina, it's yeah. when I got back from Pristina that I played in, um, I played at Reading. But it, they just, uh, I was signed to Reading for a while, um, which which was in fact really good. They offered me, you know, they were saying, look, we, we need a player. We'd love to have you seeing as you're back. And um, I went there and it, Division One's it's much better now than it was back then. I'll be very honest with you. It's, it was much competitive now than it is then. But um, yeah, I was there for about a month, and then Plymouth Raiders. Funny yeah, enough, you came to Plymouth, messaged me. Um, Worcester, Cheshire, obviously London. Oh, yeah. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. Leopards, and then back up, back obviously in Plymouth. It's yeah. Point of that which stood out for you negatively or positively, or um, stands out for you. Neg- negatively, I think playing for a lot of teams is, especially not finishing out season, is quite. In my eyes, it's negative. It's not something you want to do. You know, if you play that team, you want to stay there. I mean, me going to Reading was, I was at home doing absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to do, like, I'm literally doing nothing at home. So I thought, you know what, Reading and Coach Manuel at the time, you know, he, me and him were really, really good friends. Even right now, he, I remember he come to watch um, me play one, two times when I was in Worcester. Um, he just said, look, we're just looking for a player. Would you like to come? And I said, yeah, I would. And then, unfortunately, but he did know if a BBR team called, I would probably leave, which I did. Came to Plymouth for the mm. remainder of that season. You know, had, had had a great time here. We didn't make playoffs, unfortunately, but it was. Well, you got was, to the BBL Cup final, so I remember. Cup final, yeah, I remember that did pretty well. The blowout. We'll say no more. Yeah, yeah, it was quite. It was. It was a tough. That was a, that was a tough day. That one was. It was a nice travel down there. We got to stay there the night before, which is new. But yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I do good. remember that massively. Um, yeah, I gave my. I remember that we lost. I gave my runners up thing. I, I do not categorically do not keep any runners up trophy. I don't believe in that at all. Really? I gave my runners up. Yeah, I gave my runners up one to. Um, uh, who was it? It was. It was a young kid. It was a Plymouth fan that made all the journey up, and I oh, thought, yeah. well, the least I could do, you know, like, I was like, here, this, is, like, you guys can have. You can give it to a young fan. I'm really not sure who it was at the time. Really? But I, I, I wonder if he's me too. Yeah, I don't know. They might have thrown it away as well. Were well, you giving it to me for? I wanted the other one. <laughs> <laughs> they probably threw it away as well. So uh, do, I think you came, gave me the wrong one. I mean, I'm interested in that. I'm interested in that team that season. That was that was a weird season. Like a lot of people coming and going, but at one stage, I think it beat Wolves at home in the first leg of it, uh, that would have been the trophy. The trophy. Yeah, that was yeah. one the of the best. One of the best BBL performances I'd seen for a long time. It was oh, you had Anton Grady was hitting threes and getting the rebounds. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. We had um, a great team that year, to be honest. Yeah, we had a really very good team. team. We had a very good team. I think um, we had Daryl Corletto, who was yes. player coach at the time, but we also had Johnny White, who was coaching. But I think it was it was a. Uh, I, I was new. Right. <laughs> you get, I, I was very new to that team, so. Whenever you're new to a team, you don't you don't know where you stand. You don't know hmm. what's been going on. You don't know you know the backstory for you know that first part of the season. So for me, it was more of a just just come in and do my role. They were very clear with me. You're going to come in. You're going to back up Reese Carter, and you're going to just do your you know do what you can. But the more I started staying there, the more I felt the you know a lot of hostility between the two teams, the, the hmm. two groups. You know, it was yeah, uh, yeah. the kind of imports against everyone else sort of hmm. thing, and. Uh, and yeah, it, it was very weird, but a lot of off-court stuff affected on-court stuff, mm-hmm. to be very honest with you. And um, everyone was really vocal about it. And we had loads of, you know, Anton Grady had to leave as well mm-hmm. at one point and it just made it more difficult. 
Yeah. And uh, but yeah, it was it was it was a good it was a good little stretch of teams. I I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed the whole. You know, I enjoyed Plymouth. It's, um, obviously, being from a city, being in a little town like Plymouth for me, it was just fun. Like I got to keep my head down. I got to work. I got to yeah. just enjoy enjoy being out here. And then yeah, it was it was fun. I mean, once I'd left, uh, I started reading into a lot of like negative stuff about myself as well, which I I really I'm please enlighten me if any of you two know, but which I genuinely don't remember what it was from as well. I just remember reading online about, uh, you know, let's, you know, let's not re-sign Dusha or he's pathetic or he's, I don't know. I just started seeing a lot of negative press to be honest with you. Yeah, but, um, that's sports. That's sports review though. And I, I think that's just sports in general. Yeah, I, I mean, I even, even this year it's carried over, it's carried over from even this season to be honest. But then again, it's, it's sports, you know, fans are always going to have an opinion. Fans are always going to have Where are you what reading? they want to say. No, mate, you you should start going on What's Bev and reading. Oh, just, mate, Watch Bev, leave it. We're not talking about What's Bev. I, I, mean, I, watched, I went on that site one time and then I just realised it's just a bunch of people just that need to express their opinions. Yeah, so I thought, it's, yeah, it's probably best no players ever access that site. It's a, so, yeah, yeah, what, I would say, what I would say with all that is, yes, it's professional sport. Yes, people are allowed the opinion. But do you know what? Having the BBL so accessible yeah. means that uh, Everyone hears everything, and sometimes that can be good, but there's a small percentage of, of negative out there, which people do see, which normally I yeah, think it, yeah, for sure. in, in sports like Premier League or whatever, it could get hidden with the mass. Yeah, you know? yeah. But because players, coaches, staff are so accessible to the fans, hmm. it, you know, it's great when you're winning, but it's not so hmm. great when you're losing. Yeah, um, for sure. I, for sure. I, I certainly think you've proven anyone wrong. That's for sure. Since you've been here, you know, I spent some time with you in training, and just seeing how you are with the other players is unbelievable. I I didn't realize how much of a leader you were until you stepped on the court. Yeah. 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 No, I I, I appreciate that. I mean, I I just obviously fans don't really get to see that part. They only get to see what we you know what we let them see really but I mean, fans are always going to have something to say i mean even me coming here i knew it was going to you know a few people weren't going to like that or you know guys are going to have their own saying about it and, and and it's tough in my mind there's nothing i could really do just yeah. come in here win win as much as i can hopefully win some championships for the city and then just yeah like hopefully change their minds i I'm, i just remember um once i'd left worcester someone uh someone who works for the BBL sent me a link to, uh, I don't know how it worked, just sent me a link to like a, a page where there's just loads of different comments Yeah, and just, really just reading about it. Yeah, but the, other than that, I've not really been, I use Twitter most of the time to just keep up yeah. to what people say, but everyone's entitled to their own opinion, fans, players, everyone. For me, my, my only concern is, not concern, but my only kind of thing is just keep it professional. Like the second you want to get mm. spiteful, personal, or, or in my case, it's ever get ever get like like real personal so you know if anything like family wise or, or yeah. targeting certain stuff then I would definitely have something to say and I would probably you know I'm, I'm that's how I am I'm yeah, I think that's my family and I always will be yeah you know so talk but, about yeah. Worcester talk about Worcester just move in a side step there yeah that was nice little stuff. Euro step there <laughs> no, no, no. Worcester, Worcester Worcester was fun like Worcester yeah. was my, my my favorite year to be honest it's, Worcester was one of my favourite years games. Oh yeah, that was lovely. That, that was lovely, man. That's my teammates, though. <laughs> That's definitely all credit to my teammates. Fifty assists in five games is, is assist says it all, and it's teammates. They just done a great job of scoring the ball. To be fair, but to be honest, they they allowed me to do it. They they trusted me enough to. Uh, well, we, you know, you're a floor general. We're going to give you the ball, and you just deliver. And that's exactly what happened. You know, they was in the right spots, and we ran the right sets. PJ gave me, you know, trusted me a lot at, the, at that time as well. So did Danny. So it, it was just fun. I really enjoyed Worcester. Like I would be very honest with you, I was like so key, like my mindset was set on staying in Worcester for for a while. Like mm -hmm. I did not see myself leaving Worcester at all. Yeah. Like I genuinely did not see myself leaving Worcester when I was there at the time. Obviously, issues arised when I was there uh, with me and one of the imports, uh, which I, I don't know. I don't really want to get into, but it's not mm -hmm. uh, at the time. People thought. It was all at the press conference come out talking about um uh oh, I forgot what the word is. It's such a big word, I don't even remember it. It was like a um I'm awful with that. It, it was just no, some, no place for those words on this show. 
<laughs> yeah, like it was, exactly. Let's keep this key stage three for me if that's possible. But but yeah, it was just they'd come out saying it was some off court stuff, and I was in the owner's office numerous amount of times like, telling him, "Look, like I'm, I would do whatever you need me to do to prove to you I'm not involved." But uh, and then it, it did. I ended up just unfortunately, I ended up resigning. I ended up handing me and my teammate at the time ended up handing in our resignation just because of how. Uh, for me personally, it was how I was backed into a corner to make a certain decision, turn around and speak up on something which wasn't my business or, mm. or, or you know, essentially go backstab a teammate. And I'm not really that person. So I just, I ended up leaving. And then on the press release, of course, they tagged me in the same press release as my teammate. And then everyone in Worcester just started moving ballistic. Even till this day, when you go down, they I just get a lot of bad, like, negativity from Plymouth and I think not from Plymouth from Worcester sorry mm. and I feel like some of the fans like league fans not so much team fans see that and also you know some being from Plymouth who also kind of have their in, their impressions of me from my history in Worcester as well so it's a bit well, so I don't I don't, yeah, I don't know really it's, yeah but it was I loved it overall wise basketball wise I, I absolutely loved it I played my best basketball I got made some lifelong friends who I'm still in contact with and talk to nearly every day and Mm. Yeah, I had a great season. You, you ended up with 14 uh, assists at a career high um, against Raiders in that season. 17, uh, 17 against Bristol <laughs> Flyers <laughs> home. Don't do. I Mate, if you're, if you're going to do your history, <laughs> mate, let's get the right <laughs> one. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is on your Facebook. <laughs> on my Facebook. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably put that up on Facebook just because it was against Plymouth. So <laughs> let me make sure everyone's down at Plymouth. <laughs> no, but yeah, you're, you're right. I did have. Um, a week before that game, actually, I had 17 on when we had the Sky Sky deal. I had 17 with um, against Bristol Flyers home, and which I think it was a cup game. Maybe that's why uh, it come oh, up okay. like, out of league action. But yeah, yeah. it was it made shit, passing the ball was just something I love doing. Like it just you you're what, in the right spot. If you're talking about press releases, I've got a couple for you right here, Pablo. You're gonna love this. Go on. I got Go on. <laughs> I got two press releases. Okay, uh-huh. the first one is a really nice one, and this is gonna give people an idea of who you are. 2017, a teenage Basel fan who has bravely battled back after recovering from severe burns enjoyed a surprise visit from Worcester Wall star LVC Dusha just before they discharged him home from Birmingham Children's Hospital. So tell us about mm. that. That to be honest, like his name's Lloyd Sanders. We're still friends till this day. Me and Lloyd. So he burned, he burned sixty eight percent of his body, oh. on a, in a in a fire. And funny enough, that three weeks before that, I burnt my arm. I'm not sure if you could, well, you can't see anyway. You won't be able to see it on the chat. But I burnt my <laughs> hand. I burnt my hand um, in, in a similar fire as well. From one of it was it was one of my teammates was cooking. He completely forgot he left the stove on, and it just oh, caught shit. fire. To the entire kitchen, yeah. And is I ended it, up the other I've got here. Yeah, that's the one where it said that the was the injury was caused by a freak accident in the kitchen. In the kitchen, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which had which had nothing, which had absolutely nothing to do with me, but I can't go around and be like, Oh, it's not me, it's it's that American. So um <laughs> so uh, yeah, I ended up got, so I was travelling to Birmingham anyway for my own treatment. I was I had to go every forty eight hours to keep getting treatment and washed wow. and treatment and washed and disinfected. And then I heard, obviously, Lloyd, I heard about Lloyd's injury. So I thought, well, let me, let me go meet him. And he's, a bar, you know, he's young, plays basketball. He's really tall as well. And he's a lovely guy. He's one of the most nicest kids you'll meet. His family was amazing. I met his little sister, his mother, all of them. So I'd, I'd go see him. When I'd go get my treatment, I'd drive down to Birmingham uh, Children's Hospital and I'd see him. I'd spend, you know, hours, about an hour a day with him. Hmm. And... Um, we ended up inviting him and his entire family down to the Worcester game, gave them the front row seats, oh, which, nice. you know, Worcester, Worcester, thank you to Worcester for even doing that. It was, you know, they were really helpful with that as well. We gave him seats. He came to every game. They had like a season ticket. I made sure all my tickets and the players' tickets were always given to Lloyd and his family first. And he just loved it. Like when I got there, he he was really beat up. Like he, he didn't want to walk. He kept going on his wheelchair. He kept having to be supported up and down. Wouldn't take stairs, would take lifts. And I'd just go sit there and I'd take him gifts like every week. I'd send him shoes or I'd give him jerseys and I'd give him like my GB jersey or I'd give him my Albanian jersey. So I'd just go and give him everything. And then literally two weeks later or even the day I met him, he was so like excited to just meet someone who obviously to me in my eyes, I'm just a regular person. But him in his eyes, he was like, oh, 
you know, a professional basketball player. So he, he got up, he put his shoes on by himself and he'd done his own laces, which at the time is, is such a big deal for the doctors to even see him do that, you know. So he started walking down the stairs by himself and it was just, it was just lovely to see him. And he's, he's become a friend till this day. Like we talk to each other quite often. I check in on him and his family and he, he's such a, like, he was, yeah, I'd, I'd nearly forgotten about that, mate. But yeah, it was such a good experience doing that as well. I had a great time in Worcester, mate, honestly. It was fun. But then the whole burning in the kitchen thing, that was nothing to do with me. That's, I'm, not, I'm not a snitch, but I'm snitching on this one. That was nothing to do with me, all right? <laughs> all all uh, I'm saying is really any time we talk about food or training, like you explain you can't cook, and now this all makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't let anyone leave. Even right now, if someone's in the kitchen, for example, if Will or, or Big Mike are in the kitchen cooking, I'll go and they're using the stove or the oven, I'll go sit there and cross my arms and just wait for one of them to finish. I'll be like, listen, make sure it's off, switch it off by the wall, make sure it's clean. Like, I don't want any, I, I can't afford any more mistakes, please. Not in yeah. the kitchen, no. Mm, definitely not in that kitchen. <laughs> yeah. That's really funny. I love that. <laughs> mm. Uh, it was a good experience, man. I, I, I really enjoyed it. Worcester was, a, Worcester was a great time, man. Seriously. Let's talk, um, let's talk Always Balling. Let's yes. talk Always Balling. You, you joined. He's got it on now, by the way. It was a podcast. I've got it on right now. But he's showing it. He's, he's got I the know, gear I on now. Can't see. I've got it on right now. <laughs> you you joined right Always Balling in 2018? Uh, when I was at Worcester. So whenever that, my first... Yeah, 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 2018. So, yep. talk through how that came along. Um, so, Asim, of course, is the the founder. He's It's his brand. It's all him. And he's a lovely person. Amazing, amazing person. He he works and will work with absolutely anyone, any team. He, he will do whatever he can to help. Um, he's funny enough from, lives in 30-minute drive away from where my parents live. Oh, really? So, uh, yeah, so it was... Uh, there's a red cross by your mic, Paul. I don't know what that means. Or have I done that? That, that was me just muting my microphone while my dog was running around in circles. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. Uh, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry, I did. I, thought I don't know how to use this app, so I thought I might have done something wrong. But yeah, but As- Asim's amazing, man. He, he, he asked me to be a brand ambassador and um, he just, he, he was awesome. Done a, was a brand ambassador for him for about a year or two. And then after a while, obviously my following became really big. I had a big season in, in Worcester, which kind of helped the next step to mine and his relationship. He he kind of proposed the idea, or I think I approached him with it, with the sense of having my own sort of brand within a brand. Well, I think I, one of us, approached, I'm not sure how it started. And um, it just started off with just something as basic as T-shirts and it started doing quite well. And the guys, even at, you know fans in Worcester and around the league, would would purchase stuff and we were both kind of like oh well, wow like it's quite like even to me till this day like it's like oh wow like there's actually people wearing a shirt that's like kind of represents myself you know what i mean so it's like a it, it was just big for us and then the more time's gone across the more we've worked with each other you know he, he's got loads of brand ambassadors now they will, they will do anything to help out basketball they support loads of events in summertime, you know, they, they got their noses and everything. Like, Always Balling is such a good brand, man. And I promise you guys, in a few, not even a few years' time, and in, in not, I know we're not Nike, that's what I always say. I get it, we're not Nike. But in a few years' time, or I think sooner than a few years, Always Balling is going to be a massive provider to, to UK sports and, and just guys in general, sportswear in general. Like, honestly, the, the materials got so much better over the years. The, the pricing's unbelievable. Like, yeah. you, you know, you're paying, you're paying like £40 or £35 for a, a dry fit t-shirt and we've got the exact same material and we're offering, you know, like 15 pound max or 17.50 or mm. do you know what I mean? So it's just, yeah, but honestly, uh, so for me, that's, that's that he's helped me kind of have my little brand in, in, in his, in his, uh, clothing line as well. So thank you to him. I it's and it's I, nice. I, mate. I agree the materials are lovely. Oh yeah. I can't, I can't talk highly enough. And we, I run the, uh, the BBL's only fantasy league. And yeah. for, uh, this has been the first year he's not sponsored it because we've got another sponsor, but he's he's sponsored it and oh, was throwing people <laughs> gifts and and prizes and and yeah, it's awesome. The, he's what am- he does he's amazing. Awesome. He he's honestly amazing. Like what he, literally what he does is is like, even I say to him sometimes, oh, I'm like you're just a night like you're just a lovely guy. Like he's honestly just a nice guy. Like even 
uh, we're working with something with the Raiders now, which I don't oh, want really? to speak too much about because Ooh, yeah, inside, inside you'll, info. it'll be coming out soon. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be coming out soon. We're working with something with the Raiders as well. So even having the Raiders, like in my mind, I've got a, a, a BBR franchise kind of supporting my sort of other business on the side and yeah. Asim's business on the side with always balling and stuff. So it's just, it's so like, it's honestly, it's, it's massive, mate. So, those of you who haven't seen... So if you, you've got a new line, you've got a new range coming out, have you? Uh, yes, we do have a new range coming out, but we've also got something coming out exclusively with just the Raiders. So nice. say, that'll be big time as well. I think that'll be... Yeah, I think it, it'll catch a lot of attention as well, especially with the you know the support the Raiders get and how, how loyal the fans are to the Raiders down here. So the uh, T-shirts and everything. So it'll you be nice to see them with... Uh, and, you need to get me something without the branding saying like always not balling or like always balling <laughs> or like because I don't do that anymore. I just sit down. Like, We're gonna get you always one. sitting one, yeah. And there, there yeah, like, one. Turn your whistle, something like that. Staying indoors. Yeah. <laughs> staying oh yeah, we do have a staying indoors one actually. So yeah, that's perfect <laughs> for you. <laughs> That oh, one's perfect for you. But yeah, always balling been amazing, man. They they they're so good to me. And it's nice to have my own like even now, just looking on on shelves and looking around the room, like I just see my own hoodies and my own shirts and in my head I'm thinking man, a kid from Albania like, who, who am I to have that you know what I mean but I'm ever so grateful for it man like I'm one of the most humblest people you'll meet like obviously unless I really know you I'll just be big headed but if you don't know me I'm, I'm genuinely like a super humble guy and I'm just grateful for everything man but yeah always balling he's credit to him I'm going to end up messaging now telling him you better listen to this because I've just <laughs> spoken ever so highly about you <laughs> oh mate it is good yeah. I, it's the first I mean I've followed the, the BBL for a number of years and it's the first instance I've I've known of that specifically where a, where a clothing label has gone with like you as almost like the face of always balling yeah, pretty much, and then that's and that's that helps me as well. I'm just gonna put my phone in charge one second, and that um, that helps me as well. Like that's that's another thing, especially with sometimes like me. I'm 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 a very positive person, but I always I always think about stuff logically. I always think about mm. stuff like in a different aspect. So for me, it's like being the face of a brand in my mind is like, well, I've kind of always got to be professional. I've always got to be on point mm-hmm. I've always mm-hmm. got to, you know I mean you can't afford to take that time off because I'm not only representing myself or the team I'm playing for at the time but even when I'm not signed anywhere I'm I'm the face of always balling you know what I'm saying so yeah. I don't want to be uh, getting into trouble I don't want to be doing the wrong stuff do you know what I mean so it's, it's, it's grow up as well it's made me grow up more of a, of a as, as a person not mm. just a, a player do you know what I mean yeah well, you 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 are a humble person, um, and I want to I want to talk to you about there's a there's a specific game that I want to I want to ask you about. But you you spent well, Cheshire Phoenix was next. I want to get to the to the City Royal stuff, but Cheshire Phoenix a brief spell there. Just to tell us about that briefly. Yeah, it, it was good. Um, obviously, once I'd left Worcester, I still wanted to play. I left Worcester sort of like on on like a. I feel like I've not done everything I could do. Do you know what I mean? Even though right. I had a great year, I felt like I, could, I still got more in me. Like, why? Well, it'd be a shame to. There was only about a month left of the season, but I just thought it was. It would have been a shame to cut the season short. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I ended up going to Cheshire, which was the team we lost to in the BBL Cup. So I know that didn't sit well with the Worcester guys neither. But um, I didn't see it in the sense of hurting anyone's feelings at the time. I just saw it in the sense of I need and I, I need some money. I need to play somewhere and che- Cheshire. Uh, talking at the time so but it was okay it was well I didn't um, I came really late and it, it was all a bit new to me and it was all a bit like you know they, they kind of their high for that season was winning the BBL Cup and that already happened and I'm just kind of on the back end of a team that's just you know bottom of the league but it, it was good the fans were really good when I was out there it was really far from home and with everything that happened in Worcester I kind of just I put myself in a little hole, to be honest with you. I put myself in like a little, just stayed in my room all the time and stuff I wouldn't normally do. Like I didn't mingle with the guys and, right. you know, they'd go out or something. I'd stay in my room. I'd just play video games. I just kind of put myself in a little, obviously depre- depression's a massive word. So I definitely wasn't depressed, you know, but there's people depressed about much serious things in life. But I put myself in like a little hole where I just didn't enjoy being there. And then mm-hmm. it affected me on court and it affected me in practice and it started affecting the coaching staff and the team. So I, it just wasn't, it, it, it was great like I'm so grateful to even play there and 
uh, you know, if if, the t- if things were ever right again, would I, I probably would ever go back there again. But I'd go back there with wanting, with the mindset of actually wanting to be there. Like, mm-hmm. uh, at the time of leaving Worcester, I was sort of in a mindset of, I just left the team. The best thing I could probably do right now is go to another team. When in fact it wasn't. It was sort of, you know, just deal with the repercussions of having to leave a team where you were just kind of starting and things were going well instead of just jumping elsewhere and still dealing with the mental aspects of that. But yeah, Cheshire, Cheshire was okay. It was just. I don't think it was the right environment for me at that time. Hmm. That's fair. Yeah. And then London City Royals, and and specifically, 2019 Trophy Final. Um, oh yeah. The I mean the the overtime period in that was was LVC Dusha time. Yeah. yeah. In my opinion, having watched it, I mean how you you started that overtime quarter like. Like you hadn't, like it was fresh. Like you were the only player left on the court that still had the legs to run, like you were, and and it won the game. Yeah, no, I don't know. Just second win. I thrive on being on being like in shape, staying in shape, and not allowing yourself let go and stuff. And what other stage to prove it than the trophy final? We're going against London Lions. There was twenty, I believe, there was like twenty-one players from from the UK. Majority yes. of them being in London yeah. at that game. Do you know what I mean? So it was for me. It wasn't just. Well, it was all basketball related, but playing against guys who you play with every summer, you see with every summer, you bump into, you know, in the tube station or something. Like it's oh. just, it's a big, it was a big deal. Like I wanted, I wanted to win that as well. Like I'd lost the BBL Cup with Worcester, I'd lost the trophy final with Plymouth, and in my mind, like I just started developing. Like oh, am I really like, oh, I can get all the way there. I just can't cross the finish line. So it was just really nice to get it, you know. And sorry, excuse me. And there was no better team in my mind to do it with than. Mm-hmm. Guys I've grown up with Ed Lucas. We're born on the same day. Like we, um, you know, <laughs> his family, like my family. Like we're just with everyone. With Will, who I've got an amazing relationship with. With, with Ash, who I've known for years. With Matthew, who is like an older brother to me. With Jules, who's practically blood brother to me. Like it's just just with guys who you you never thought you'd win a championship with. So it was it was amazing to win that game. We wanted that game too. And then even playing well in the fourth. It, for me, it just came down to. Everyone played well. Like my my theory of me playing well is everyone playing well. So if mm-hmm. I do the right stuff, it reflects on them. You know, what I mean, if I pick up full court and play defense, then the person next to me better play good defense as well. Otherwise, I'm not going to bust my ass if you're going to just relax or sort of thing. But yeah, it was it was a hell of an experience, mate. I'd do it all over again if I could. Orlan Orlan Jackman told me that he uh, he had a sp- he specifically talked to you. Made it sound like he was coaching. If I'm honest, is this is it true that he said to you, "Look, you've been here several, like you just said, really, you've been here several times before in the finals, and you've not done it. This is your time." O- OJ, the funny thing with Orlan yeah, is there's <laughs> the, <laughs> there's nothing he won't say. Like o- OJ's a coach; <laughs> he's a life coach. Do you get what I mean? Like yeah, OJ yeah. will coach everyone. Like I, I do believe he said that. Maybe not as as accurate as I was just explaining it, but. OJ's a vocalist like all and like I was we were having this conversation the other day like any team in the UK or anywhere would be lucky to have OJ just because of how vocal he is I can't believe he's not in the BBL yeah. no but he doesn't want to be in the BBL like all and I teased him earlier like I saw someone tweet or someone put on um, Instagram like our NBL guys who do you think's the next guy to make the jump up I tagged Orlan as a joke just to be like, oh, you know, your, <laughs> your chance is coming sort of thing. But he, he, if he wanted to, he could be, to be honest with you. But he just... Well, it's got to be his choice because he could, he could he'd almost walk onto any starting five. For sure, for sure. And just his leadership is is, is zero to nothing. Like, he's he's unbelievable. Like, his leadership is <laughs> unreal. He holds people accountable. He 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 makes it clear that it's all for your benefit. Like, he's amazing. He did have a good chat to all of us Um before the trophy final, me and him, uh, yeah, like he's a very good friend of mine. I could speak hours about OJ. Man. I got a lot of love for him. Yeah, that's another but show. If he's, if he's trying to take credit for that, if he's trying to take credit for that overtime win, next time you see him or speak to him, tell him I said it's not entirely true, but he did. He did have a massive part. <laughs> he did have a big part in it. So, so we could just we're time conscious here. Just want to talk last two things, really: short term future and long term future. Short term for me would pretty much be a, at the moment right now, I'm in the mindset of getting my body to the best, like physically I can best get it. I'm, you know, yeah. I'm in the weight room much more than I am. I'm trying to do it and I want to win something with Plymouth. Like I've got this mindset of, okay, maybe I'm not, not many people here are, are fond of me, whatever. But the only way I can turn people's heads is by physically bring, like winning. 
you know, nothing says anything yeah. better than your game, you know. So for me, short term is all getting my body back to 100%, back to where I think I'm okay, like not, you know, not feeling the fatigue as I am so much right now. I, mean, I know we got, there's excuses left, right, and center, and lockdown, this, this and that, but there's not really any excuses, to be honest. I'm trying to get my body back to where it is. And long-term plan, I'm, um, uh, well, I don't know if it'll fall into short term. I'm actually, I want to get into coaching. I've got some other outside basketball stuff I'm trying to sort out. I'm looking at buying a house which I want to do, which is probably sounds nothing to, you know, to you guys or people listening, whatever. But to me, it's been a big deal of mine for a long time trying to get onto the property ladder. But outside of that and more sports related, I'd love to coach. In the long term, I, I would love to coach. I'd love to maybe go back to Albania. I'm looking to hold a camp back in Albania. Maybe, I don't know. If I can nice. do it. Yeah, I don't know if I can do it this summer just because of, um, sorry, summer 21, just because of, I don't know how, you know, COVID restrictions might still be affecting things at the time so I'm thinking about doing a camp within the next two years to just try and give people more opportunities I mean I'm not I, I'm, I'm not loaded with money I'm not a big a big deal or whatever but I just want to give guys in Albania a chance I get loads of guys back home messaging me talking about oh like can you bring me here and can I what can I do to get there and in my mind it's like well the least I can do is like you know help them out or give them something so even if it's something as simple as running them a camp having everything recorded and just getting loads of footage for them to have. I think that's the thing that they lack a lot on out there is footage. So I really want to do this camp. I was meaning to do it last summer, but obviously um, a, f- a family member of mine passed away. So going back home, I went for different reasons. It was just, it was loads of different stuff. So. Yeah. But yeah, but that's, that, that, that's one of my, you know, just little goals in my head. I've got loads of goals. I've got loads of things I want to do in my mind, in my head and stuff. But for me, then helping Albania back out, you know, would be amazing. You know, I'm, I was born there. The least I can do is never forget them, sort of thing. Absolutely, yeah. and and I mean, even in terms of BBL teams, long term, you see yourself sticking around in a Raiders jersey for a while. I I would like to, yeah. I I, I was I was uh, teasing PJ the other day about this. I was telling him um, I, I like winding PJ up. You know, even when we was in Worcester, I was just telling him I've ne- I've never seen him this happy since I've been back. So I was telling him, look, if you want to remain happy, you better kind of you know keep me around if you can. But I think with the, with the group of guys we got. I think it's it's a no-brainer for the club to try and possibly keep the same guys, if not only build to it. Do you know what I mean? We got a, a group of guys who, who, I mean, Paul, you've been there yourself in practice. Yeah. We're 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 just professional. We ain't got egos. No one comes in there with the, oh, I deserve more money, or I'm this guy, so I should be doing this. Like everyone's so, oh, okay, like like our academy guys can turn around to the pros and and be like, look, like you're in the wrong spot, get in your spot. There's something as little as that, and and and, mm. and we're just yeah right thank you like appreciate your uh, yeah thank you for making us better sort of thing like no one's got an ego we're all mm-hmm. we all get along with each other we all you know known each other pj does a great job with us danny does an amazing job with us and it's just it's nice i'd love to stick around i'd I'd, I'd love to i'd love to stick around i mean i've always said uh if i was to settle at a club it'd probably be it'd probably back in surrey just because if i started my career there i'd love to finish yeah. it there but i, I would more than happily staying like I do see myself staying with Raiders much much longer than a season and I hope it does and it will kind of reflect on maybe the city and the club has become more fond of myself and these are little stuff I say to myself in my head like let me Mm. prove myself so much to a point where they're going to want me to stay instead of want me to leave you know what I mean like just little yeah little attributes sort of things but yeah yeah, I I like like Plymouth man I think with what you've done cold really cold though Hey, it's cold, yeah. Don't tell me it's about cold. cold. Don't tell me. I've had the builders in all week. Don't tell me about cold. My doors are open. Oh, yeah. Coming in. I'll bring you over my electric heater. i got a little electric heater by the door. <laughs> it does wonders, mate. I'll bring you that over. Hey, look, we, we no, would mate. love to have you stay. We would love to have you stay in Plymouth. Like, you know, this this time with, with Andrew Lawrence on, on the benches has kind of shown us really what you are capable of. And it's and you've had no choice but to jump into a role which is full on, like you've had no choice. Yeah, and, and you've done it very very well, you know. So I think the fans and that for sure will will certainly be wanting you back. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's been it's been fun. I mean, it's it, for me. My theory is the the the, the better the team, the better I, I play. Sort of thing, you know. Having a, a team like this makes my job so much easier. To be honest with you, like I'm I'm not. I watch all the games back myself and I've not done anything extraordinary other than just run the play, get the plays, get the ball to the right guys and 
try to do the right thing at the right time. And that just compliment to the team, to be honest with you, because they're they're in the right spots, they're doing the right thing. So, you know, as, as well as you say, or as well as people think and et cetera, say I'm doing, I'd say that reflects more on, yes, me, but also the guys, because at the end of the day, without them delivering, I'd, I'd just be another just another guy making an effort, you know. But no, I do appreciate that. I'm actually enjoying it. I do like the role. I can't wait for Drew to get back, even though that, you know, that might mean I wouldn't start or I'd play less minutes. But I just, you know, being a fan of Drew myself and a very good friend of his, I must say, I can't wait, even for the fans as well. I can't wait for them to have to have him back. I know when we played you guys here with Royals, he put on oh. a quiet performance. You know? He Come put on, on a pretty good performance. Yeah. And then he only turned up. He turned up with like six players, wasn't it? Six or seven players, and it was like, oh, this yeah. this would be a Raiders win. And then he just did what he did, and it's game over. Well, I've got to do something now, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, he's a phenomenal player. I, I can't wait for him to get back, mate. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Fans are gonna love it. We'll make our job easier, and hopefully, we carry on winning as well. PJ got coach of the month as well. Come on, Big time. come on, PJ. Yeah, yeah, it's not. That's good. That's very good. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it's good to see that. Yeah, I know. You I text, mentioned, I text you mentioned him earlier you, saying he's welcome. I text <laughs> <laughs> if you like winding him up, ask him about the 93 playoff final. And then rum. The 93 playoff final, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't... I'm, I'm, this is the problem. I'm going to ask him tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to ask him tomorrow and try, try and get into his head tomorrow. <laughs> Pablo, if I get a text message tomorrow from PJ. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, top stuff. Uh, PJ's a geezer. He's all right, mate. He's, he's a legend. He is. He's a, he's a fun <laughs> man. I think uh, talking about winding up is probably the time, Pablo, to, uh, to close. Oh, lovely. Today. Lovely little segue there. Well done. Good stuff. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we, we, we should wrap things up. So uh, thank you very much. LVC Douche to the first guest on the Plymouth Raiders podcast. Yes, sir. Thank you lot very much for having me. I appreciate you. Sorry for having to put up with me talking so much as well. Like, this is I'm listening to this back, so it's gonna probably do my head in. But no, I do appreciate you lot having me on seriously. It's what it's all about. It's what it's all about. Thank you very much. Thank everybody for listening. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Look forward to the next show. Thank you, Good both man. of you. Make sure you like and subscribe to the podcast and tune in next week when we'll be talking to Mr. Chris Porter Bunton. Until then, take it easy and we'll speak to you soon.